Hello everybody, welcome back. We are going to be talking to more people from Verdun and today we are talking to Froomey, um, who is over on that side, not that side. Um, how are you doing today, buddy? Yeah, I'm great, thanks. Um, not long home from work, sort of putting my feet up and uh, excited to do this, to be honest. Been looking forward to it all day. Oh, you you say that, but it's like you've got home from work and then now you have to do a little bit of extra more work before you can really relax. Uh, but I can actually have a laugh with people doing this, so... Yeah, true. I mean, hopefully we'll have a good time. Um, I've got to kind of introduce who you are. So Freebie is the League of Legends director for Verdant Esports. And as we get into this, I just kind of want you to talk to me a little bit about what that actually means. What do you do? Um, yeah, so I kind of oversee the project and sort of pull all the pieces together. So my role is basically around scouting and recruitment. So I go away, um, obviously... You know, we have an idea in mind about what we want to do, and I go away and I execute that idea. So, you know, I'm big on recruitment, so I look at the players, who to bring in for which role, and my role is especially important when it comes to bringing in the staff. Um, so I go away, I interview staff members, um, make sure that they're suitable for the role, and then I'm sort of the liaison between the owner and the team. Mm. And I just sort of take a bit more of a backseat when it comes to, to scrims these days to sort of just sort of look at the team, how they're getting on and see where the missing pieces are and how we can improve going from split to split. Amazing. Lovely to hear. And, you know, you must have been doing your job pretty well because Verdant went through the NLC calibration tournament last split, obviously ended up in Div 2 now, smashed through that one, had a great time. I just want you to give a little bit of your insight. So obviously with that calibration tournament, it changed a lot compared to what the old format was, where it would be UKL into UKLC. It kind of became like a, a big kind of shootout of who could get where first. And what are your opinions on that? And what are your thoughts about it? Oof, well, um, so the calibration tournament was kind of like a shotgun tournament where it's yeah. like, okay, everything's changing now. And basically any team can fall where, wherever they want to. If they, uh, managed to get there so basically it was like i think it, it sparked a lot of controversy because in division one a lot of the teams were sort of guaranteed their spots for the mm. next season so a lot of teams that were sort of aiming for middle of the pack to avoid relegation got there and then all of a sudden they change hands uh dream hack change hands with freaks for you and they say hey we're going to do a calibration tournament so these teams that were originally safe are no longer safe mm. um and they had to go through you know, the Div 1 tournament. And obviously I thought, you know, it's a bit rushed and obviously people haven't communicated and haven't thought it through because I felt bad for some of those teams that originally thought they were safe and now they had to mm. pay players to keep playing and, and play longer. Like it was an unforeseen business cost for them and unforeseen circumstances for both the players and the staff that had to then go through that tournament. Um, but Obviously, for orgs like Verdant, who were originally planning to just qualify for the UKEL going into 2022, it was a whole new opportunity. They could get a team together that could push for a division like Div 2 or even Div 1 if uh, they applied for it. Mm. Um, so it, it saw a big reshuffle. I think, in my mind, there should have been sort of like this year overlap where they kept the same system as the year before and told teams, yeah. OK, going into 2023 this change is going to happen. So this is what you need to do to make sure that you don't end up in that reshuffle. But mm. uh, yeah, I quite like the new system, to be honest. Um, I think merging all five of the Div 2s together was the right call. And uh, I, I kind of like some of the orgs that we've seen brought into Div 1, but I think we've lost a lot of good orgs as a result mm. of the recalibration. Um, overall, I think it's a good system, just executed a bit, a bit poorly. Um, yeah. yeah, I think there should have been more time to to move into this transitional period into this new system. Mm. But uh, I think the end result is it could be a lot worse, yeah. <laughs> especially and, for Verdant. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say Verdant being obviously one of those teams that has benefited from that. And you yourself have now signed on with Verdant for, for multiple splits now. And what has attracted you to sticking with Verdant? Um. Yeah, so I first spoke to Sammy, the owner, uh, after Barrage sold their spot in in between spring and summer 2021. Mm. I sat down with Sam and, you know, I thought he was someone that I had quite a lot of time for. It wasn't right for me to go for a UK EL promotion project because I felt 
I had a lot more to give in the higher divisions, mm. although I did like Sam. So I uh, I passed along a name which was Slimkins, who I believe has already been interviewed, um, mm-hmm. and he was guiding the project. Obviously, they were prepping for the UKL at the time. And then I took a, a split out because I'd arrived quite late into the off season after Barrage had been sold, and I was I was moving house at the time and changing jobs. So I thought, you know, it's a good time to sit out. Mm. And then when the recalibration got announced, um, I realized, you know, it was an opportunity to to get back into it with the team. Slimkins messaged me saying, would I like to help out with Verdant? So I, I sat down with them at the time and, and had a lot more uh, in-depth conversation about what they wanted to do and what their aims were and decided, you know what, I, I don't mind doing this for the winter mm. um, whilst looking for opportunities because I think, you know, it'd, it'd be another feather in my cap if I could help an org like Verdant who... I had a lot of time for get into Division Two, mm. and Slimkins and I sat down. We did a lot of scouting and ultimately recruited a team which was able to uh, qualify for Division Two. And everyone was was buzzing, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> so after that, I said to Sam that I was going to explore my options, and we thought that that was going to be the end of it because I received yeah. quite an exciting opportunity in Div One. Uh, unfortunately that opportunity fell through because um, the owners pulled the plug. So I came back to Verdant uh, and had a chat with Sam and said, look, my, my options look like they're falling through. Um, I'd, I'd rather be on a Division 2 team that was looking to promote than a low-end Div 1 team because the other teams that I was looking to in Div 1 weren't exciting projects. Like It felt like mm. they were all going to be sort of battling for mid-table at best or fighting against relegation. And as I say, I, I get on really well with Sam and in order to join an org, like I have to put a lot of faith in the owner. Mm. And he, he really sold me on this long-term project where the aim was to get into the first division and then go from there. Uh, I had a lot of friends still on the org from the calibration tournament, like Dan Holt, who was the head coach, and he did a tremendous job and I really liked him. And obviously Slimkins, who I've known a long time from Barrage and even a little bit before that because we went to the same university. Um, so I sat down with Sam uh, after the recruitment phase and I said, look, I, I think I want to stay. Mm-hmm. Uh, he pitched the idea of a, a one-year deal. And I said, yeah, that sounds good considering that you know we're going to be working with these players for, for multiple splits. I want to see the project through and I want to make sure that we get to the first division. So I signed on and it's been smooth sailing mm-hmm. ever since. And the rest is history. And you spoke a little bit about how the goal there was. Um, I've spoke to everyone so far and everyone, the goal has always been, we are going to make Div 1. That yeah, is the goal. Be. That better yeah. be what everyone's saying, because I want us all singing from the same hinge sheet, which is <laughs> NLC Div 1 teams, you know, we're coming for your spot, so you better hold on to it. Otherwise, if you find us in promotion relegation with you, we're going to take it. Exactly. You're hunting for it and you guys are hungry. And I love that so much. And and seeing that from the whole team as a whole is really nice to see. And and following on from that is, so what are your thoughts about the roster so far? How has it been going as a team? I know that you guys took a little bit of a different outlook on how you built this team to what people might traditionally do. In what sense? In, uh, so that you guys looked a lot in terms of the personalities of the players rather yeah. than specifically the skill sets. Well, I mean, I'm very happy with the roster that we've managed to Mm. put together. Um, Obviously, personality testing has been something that I installed in Barrage with the staff there. And it's something I truly believe in, the philosophy of it, making sure that the players will be able to work together based on their personalities. Because I strongly believe that an average team where the players are all harmonized will be what is on paper a stronger team, but disjointed. So I believe, you know, making sure that the players are going to be able to harmonize is, is a huge thing when building a roster. That said, I, I don't just think that we're an average roster with good personality. Mm. I think we're a very strong roster, especially for the division uh, with good personalities. Um, the roster already has been spending a lot of time together. Um, there's been a, a hell of a lot of team bonding. And even now, um, the NLC is currently on uh, Div 1. And they're all sat in there together just watching the games and having a laugh. Um <sighs> But it's definitely work hard, play hard. There's yeah. been a lot of scrimming, a lot of sitting down with the coaching staff. And I think we're onto something special in terms of the roster that we've, we've put together because, as you say, we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. Um, the players really want this. They're really hungry for it. And they're committed to the long-term 
plan, mm. which is to get promotion, and they definitely have the caliber to do that. Amazing, and I love I love to just hear everyone's confidence in making this project work. And I think one person that was really confident in this roster was Serza, who is someone that you've worked before on on Barrage. And just talk to me a little bit about what the process was in terms of uh, bringing Serza over to Verdant. Uh, yeah, so working with Serza for me is always a no-brainer. I, I can't believe that I've managed to pick him up for, for this level because I think he's proven time and time again in north america and in the nlc division one mm. that he is a, a highly qualified and skilled coach and the fact that no one picked him up the split is is a crime um he's fallen into my lap and you know it's everyone else's loss um and our gain he's going to be the strongest coach in the division by far i think you'll be hard pressed to find someone with a, a strategical mind as good as Serzes, and his ability to pick and choose players is unparalleled you know he he demands a lot but he is very good at getting the respect of the players and mm. putting out the tools for them to use in game. He's, he's he's very organized, um, very committed, yeah. and you know the guy eats, sleeps, and breathes League of Legends. <laughs> and I think his past results show that he is he is the man to take us up. Yeah, of course, and it's you know you guys have have kind of committed to a really strong both player roster and staff roster and it's a roster that um at least in terms of staff a lot of you guys have worked together before at least through that calibration tournament and you've all decided to to stick on with that and i know you yourself have already spoke about your reasonings for that but is this something that you believe will help the team the fact that everyone's deciding to stay together well as in it's are you implying that it's the same team from the calibration top? No, 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 the staff, the staff team. Oh, yeah, so we've managed to keep, obviously, Dan, who I feel, you know, last split, he was kind of thrown into the deep end with the head coach of role because two had to step down due to personal reasons. And he mm. really, like, took the ball by the horns and helped guide the roster to um, mm. to Div 2. And I thought, like, even, even when I wasn't sure if I was going to be on Verdant uh, this split, I thought, you know, he's he's someone with a real talent. Uh, I was looking at him for roles in in other roles that I might have been joining, but you know I'm I'm delighted to have kept him on Verdant. And yeah, he's he's not in the head coach role now, but that's sort of through through his choice and ours, mm. um, because he's he's well suited to the role of strategic coach. Um, he's assisting Sirs are really really well. I think they kind of balance each other out. Like Dan has a lot of of qualities which Sirs doesn't necessarily have as his strongest points, and vice versa. So together, they're sort of like one strong unit, which will get the best out of our players. Dan, I think, is a very good, very good talker. And he's he's very well versed in, in micro rather than macro. So that balances out so his macro knowledge. Um, yeah, delighted to have him. Obviously, I've got Slimkins working with me as, as the team manager as well, who was the manager last split. Um, James has done well with regards to helping get players on board and and he's in charge of making sure that they're practicing as much as possible, as efficiently as possible. And he's doing a good job. I think he's really got the ear of the players. And I'm happy to be working with him again. Amazing. And we have spoke a lot about League of Legends, a lot about all that stuff. I think let's take a second to just revert back to yourself, Rumi, and what you do outside of the game. So give me a little bit of a breakdown about what your kind of day-to-day -day life is like. What do you like to do outside of League? Uh, yes, yeah, so outside of League, um, I'm, a, I'm a chemist. So I'm fresh out of my PhD in chemistry. And I work in drug discovery at the moment. So my day-to-day -day job is uh, going to work in the lab. Um, it's very arduous, but I managed to balance it well with League. Um, Apart from that, I'm really into football, more more so watching, but I also do like playing. So I go up and down the country watching Wrexham Football Club quite a lot. Um, you know, they're National League, but I think they're a team that's going to be on the up, so watch out for them. Uh, I like spending a lot of time with my friends, family, and my girlfriend. And every now and again, I do get a chance to play video games. Not as much as when I was younger, but I do like playing different games every now and again when I get a chance. Perfect. And you did mention football there. And I know 
from your Twitter profile, I've seen that you're a big fan of Neil Warnock. <laughs> so I need to I need to ask, are there going to be any kind of big Neil Warnock speeches after these games? Are you going to be rallying the team together? I think I think Warnock style's quite quite old school and works on specific. Uh, specific people i don't know if it'd translate well into esports but to me he's 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 an idol in in more ways than one but i just think watching some of his speeches is like it's so funny yeah i think <laughs> the only thing i'll say to the players is every day i fucking defend you in the press but you know oh, if um man. if all goes well and i'm hoping it does they won't be on the end of a neil warnock style bollocking yeah we'll we'll hope for that one but i think unfortunately for me that's kind of all we're really gonna have time for today it's it's been absolutely amazing chatting to you today and just before you do head out is there anyone that you want to give a quick little shout out to before we send this away yeah um obviously i was at barrage and enclave previously so i want to give a shout out to to phil mccartney at enclave and jeff at barrage Mm. um they're a big part of my career and you know Hopefully I'll do them proud by taking my next steps at Verdant. Um, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Amazing. And you're looking forward to the challenge of Verdant altogether. And I know everyone else is excited and hyped to get on this hype train that is this Verdant squad. But that is all we're going to have time for today. I've been the Snow Spy. I've been, inter- been interviewing through me today. And we will see you guys next time.